Let's take a closer look at the Jazzwares Micro Galaxy Squadron Luke Skywalker's Snowspeeder. Villa Veracino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there, and thanks for visiting the Villa Veracino YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be taking a closer look at a vehicle from Series 2 from Jazzwares Micro Galaxy Squadron line. This one is Luke Skywalker's Snowspeeder. This one is number 0038. We can see there in the foil there. And of course, Series 2. So I'm quite excited to take a look at this one. I have fond memories of the old Hasbro one um, and I think it's such a classic Star Wars vehicle. I'm very keen to take a closer look. So before I open this box up, I'm just going to take a closer look at the packaging because we don't keep, uh, as much as I would love to, we don't have two of everything, one to keep boxed and one to open. We are opening up our Jazzwares Micro Galaxy Squadron boxes. So taking a closer look before I open it up, we can see the vehicle in this large bubble on the front. We have a picture here that indicates that we can put the figure inside the cockpit and then we have the two figures here. We have pilot Luke Skywalker and Dak Rolter because of course this is Luke Skywalker's snowspeeder so perhaps that distinction means that we may get other snowspeeders in the future with different pilots or perhaps snowy effects or something cool. Um, I'm hoping that we get some more because I think it would be fun to have like a whole sort of uh, squadron of them to build with a Hoth playset, especially since we know that that AT-80 is coming for some of you, you might already have your hands on it. We're still patiently waiting for it here in New Zealand. We have that silver stripe down the front with the title and the number. On the side, we have some cool snow speeder art there. And on the back, we've got the collectible blueprint that you can cut out, particularly if you're trying to reduce the amount of packaging that you hoard or store. We have some pictures here indicating some of the movements and features. We've got something that moves, something that slides across, and apparently there is also a tow cable here. So I'm very keen to check that one out. And down the bottom, we can see some of the other vehicles from this line. We can see that Luke Skywalker Snowspeeder is part of the Starfighter class here. We've got some of these vehicles unboxed on our channel so I'll have some of those linked below if you want to check out the Ahsoka Jedi Starfighter, the AAT or the Gauntlet Fighter. Still trying to track down this X-Wing variant for our collection. We've got a window there at the side where we can kind of see the vehicle. Lots of space in these boxes. You can see there's pretty much nothing in this corner. And on the underside we just have classic text there, sort of safety and copyright information. So there is the packaging. I think it looks fun. I like the blue tones of the artwork. We've obviously got some cool Hoth scenes here in the background. So let's get stuck in and open this one up. So I have taken out the packaging from the inside and we can get a look at that cool packaging art in the background there. We can see some cool 8080s there getting sort of attacked by some snowspeeders. We see a poor snowspeeder getting blasted there. Uh, I think that looks really cool. And we've got some uh, artwork here on the inside sort of panels here as well. Some snowspeeders. Interesting sort of looking up angle from this snow speeder here. I think that one's kind of interesting. And then we've got one in here as well. So if you're trying to reduce some space, I do like to keep these backing cards because I think the artwork is pretty cool. So I'm just going to pop this in here so I can pop that out of the way and get that box out of the background. Now we can take a closer look at the vehicle itself. So first things, we'll take a look at the detail and the weathering and then look at some of those moving features. And then we'll take a look at the figures and pop them in there. So of course, when it was in the box, I noticed that these flaps kind of look like they were loose. They would kind of one of them would rattle around when I shook the box, which I think is kind of interesting. We've got one over here. So the box indicated some movement. So I'm going to have a look at this one here, which I think moves across. Oh, okay. That one's like moving the flaps. That's kind of cool. It's moving both. Um, so I guess there's like a little, we can see this one popping up when I go to the right and this one pops up when I go to the left. So that's kind of cool. 
got a little play feature there doesn't kind of click into place I can kind of push it but it's kind of a soft movement it's not really clicking to one side or the other I've got a tiny little <laughs> little uh, blaster here that's just it's just I can swivel that uh, hits about there and we can swivel that round to the other side overall I'm quite liking the wash on this it's not too dirty we've got a little bit of a smudge sort of pooling of the weathering here but overall pretty balanced I have to say this was a popular vehicle for us locally there were not very many on the shelves and they disappeared very quickly so we grabbed the first one that we spotted and I'm very glad uh, because it disappeared very quickly but also uh, we didn't get a choice of the weathering uh, but I like this one it's not too heavy um, and it also doesn't look dusty that wouldn't feel right for the snow planet um, but we do think of sort of you know the rebellion ships as not being clean and shiny they're a little bit worn so I do like the sort of the weathering that we have here on the hull so these turrets here on the front are fixed but there is a little bit of flex to them um, they don't rotate or anything like that. They are in a fixed position. Um, there was something that was like a knob that was going to turn somewhere. I don't remember where that was. But I'm just going to pull on this. And we'll see how far this tow cable comes out. Wow, okay, that's a little bit further than I thought. Okay, seems to come out to about that length. That's fairly decent. Um, so the question is... How does that come back in? Okay, I was wondering about that when I pulled this one out. There's a wheel on the bottom, and if I scroll that, it kind of looks like it was scrolling that in there for a bit, and now it's kind of stopped. I don't know. I don't know how to get that back in. Well, maybe I'm just doing that by accident. I'm not sure. Can I just push it in? It's kind of going back in very slowly. Okay, I think it is just that. It's just kind of gets, seems to get stuck every now and again. And there we go. Okay, and it does kind of just, it doesn't clip in. It just kind of sits in this little gap here in the grill. So, of course, for most of us collectors, that is more of a play feature. But I guess if you want to sort of do a tow cable scene with your 8080, uh, that is there. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know what... There was something that looked like it moved. I just got to refresh my memory on the back. Oh, okay. It was just indicating that you move that to the side and this is going to pop up and down. Okay. Um, interesting that the knob on this picture is pale gray, but the knobs here on the back are the sort of darker. That's interesting that the paint job is a little different to how it's indicated on the box there. Okay. So that's the features on the back there looks pretty cool we've just got that soft weathering here as well we've got some really cool painted details a little bit of orange here on the rest of the ship as well pretty minimal really this is pretty much just that all over gray with some dark gray painted details around a few places looking pretty cool we've got a bit of orange here and here and on the underside we can kind of see the weathering here a little bit better on the underside we can kind of see it there um, I think it's a good effect and we can just see some of the those detail lines and that little wheel that <laughs> I was kind of expecting it to work a little bit better but at least it does retract that tow cable back in there so let's take a look at the cockpit it looks like we just sort of get um, get something under there and we can open it up okay it goes to about here and then stops so that's looking pretty cool not much I don't see any painted details in here I just see some weathering in there but we can see that there should be uh, spots for two figures in there so that's looking pretty good and I'm a little bit nervous about how hard it is going to be to get a figure in this back one that's kind of a tight little area to get in I'm sure I'll be able to get one in here no problem um, but because these are clear windows I really do want to get two figures because I get the feeling I'll be able to see them quite well through that window there and that just snaps closed quite nicely so on the underside it looks like we have a landing gear here if I just pull that out it is just a little 
basically a plastic stick that we can pull out so that when we pop it down it's nice and level and that looks pretty good there so I'm going to take a closer look at the little figures <laughs> and to be honest I'm kind of impressed with the level of paint on these they are so small the camera has a trouble focusing on them at times we can see we have pilot Luke Skywalker and Duck Raltara and to be honest they look pretty much identical save for one small detail Duck has blue dots on his helmet and Luke has red dots on his helmet so once you take them out of the box that's pretty much the only way to tell them apart so we're going to try and put Luke in the front cockpit and Duck in the back one so I'm going to take these guys out they're going to pop out of their little plastic tray and get them up oh, there we go I'm going to pop this in the back these trays are so good for storing the little figures in so you don't lose them if you don't want to display them in the ship here so I'm just going to open that one up okay so I've got Luke here very tiny details but we've got a fair amount of paint here we've got white for the vest we've got a little gray chest box we've got just a plain white helmet those dots are the only things painted on the helmet we have got a tiny little yellow visor painted in there we've got orange for the flight suit gray gloves a darker gray for the boots and we've even got some white stripes here on the legs for the sort of the harness and yeah we've got a little white belt I'm always really impressed with the paint I know it's not the tidiest but we are looking at very, very tiny figures here um, we've got classic articulation with the arms and his legs so that we can sit them in a cockpit position we should have pretty much the same details here on Dak just with that blue helmet the helmet because it is white and the flight vest is white kind of it's a little bit lost around the neck but again these are pretty small figures same level of detail chest box boots gloves uh, harness there pretty cool I am nervous about oh he's very stiff through the waist actually there we go nervous about how he is going to fit in that back cockpit position let's have a go I'm gonna put Dak in there first it's a little bit hard to see you can kind of see it more here in this first one there is a little peg that I think is designed to uh, fit between the legs perhaps to hold them in place a little bit better um, and there was one just in that back compartment as well so I'm curious to see how well this is going to work of course snow speeder pilots face the other way um, we're going to see how well oh okay he just sat, sat in there that was quite easy I was really worried about how the well it was going to go in okay he just pops in there and let's get Luke in here okay and yeah that looks pretty good that's a nice fit for the figures in there you can see that peg fits between the legs so if we close the cockpit we can see those helmets in there of course the orange really shows well through cockpits and I think particularly this vehicle is one of those ones where I really want to have the figures inside because you can see them so clearly through those windows there I think that looks really cool I really hope they make more snow speeders or perhaps uh, if I had been able to buy more so I could have a few of them you know to be attacking an 8080 when I can add that one to my collection I'm desperately keen to build a, a hoth snow scene uh, for my shelf I think this looks pretty cool we've got the little tow cable out the back which you could even kind of post just a little bit out um, I think that looks kind of fun yeah I think this is a pretty cool vehicle it feels a little small in the hand obviously sometimes these packaging there's a lot of air in them but of course these are to scale and I think they look pretty good with the figures inside um, it looks a pretty good scale all up I'm really happy this is such a cool iconic Star Wars vehicle I like these little details moving that little uh, flap lever there I think that's kind of fun we've got the tow cable we can put it in sort of flight mode or landed mode there of course as I've said before I do hope that they will make 
stands of some sort. They have hinted that that may be a possible in the future. Um, but I know some, you know, industrious fans are making their own. Um, because yeah, things just look really cool when you put them in flight rather than just having everything landed on a shelf. But I think this looks really cool. I like the details. I like the weathering. The paint job is really good. Just the right sort of level of moving parts. Very cool. I really like this one. Uh, another fine addition to our Micro Galaxy Squadron collection. Do check out our other videos for more unboxings from the Jazzwiz line of Star Wars vehicles. Let me know in the comments, are you picking this one up? Do you have multiples already? Uh, I think this one is really, really cool. Catch you in the next video, and as always, may the Force be with you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, check out our other videos, and subscribe for alerts about new uploads. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.